All right, guys, we're finally doing it. We're making the campfire cart again. Finally. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. I'm so excited to have you here today. We are finally making the campfire cardigan. This thing took me a little while. There's a lot of steps. Don't worry, I'm gonna break down every step of this video in both the description section and the comment section below this video. So if you need to break it down, go step by step by step, which I'm sure you will need to, you'll be able to go straight to what step you're ready for next without having to fast forward. You'll just be able to hop straight to it. This is gonna be a lot of fun. It is a lot, it's gonna take some patience, but it is so worth it. This campfire cardigan, it's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. It's super comfortable. We can adjust the sizes. I'll be able to help guide you with that to make sure that you have the right size that best fits you or whoever you're trying to make this for and make sure that even if the pattern doesn't call for a particular size because this particular pattern has a small medium medium large and large extra large but i'll be able to at least guide you to aid you to know how to make any adjustments to make this as big or as small as you want oh this is going to be great if at any point in this video you do like what you see or you're enjoying the content please push that thumbs up button if you haven't yet subscribe to my channel click the bell and click all. That way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, fun giveaways, and you are not gonna wanna miss out. Also, if you haven't yet, check out my membership program. I have three different levels. See which level suits your needs or your interests. See if you would like a little bit more from my channel. Also check out my Instagram where you can see behind the scenes and also get a heads up on what tutorial is coming and what material you're going to need to have ready for it if you want to be prepared and crochet with me as the tutorial goes live. Awesomeness. All right, so the pattern for the campfire cardigan is not mine. It was actually created by an amazing woman named Jess Copom, C-O-P-P-O-M. <laughs> hope I'm pronouncing that right. She is a part of the Make and Do crew. And so this is a free pattern that you can find online. I will put the links to all of the pattern breakdown in the description section and comment section below this video. However, this pattern, the free version is stock full with a bunch of ads. And I personally found it a little challenging to weed out the pattern from the free version of the pattern. There is a version of this pattern that you can pay for that is an ad free version. I highly recommend you get that one. I know I did personally just to weed out all of the ads and make it completely structured and easy to follow. So I'm gonna let that be up to you. The only reason I am able to make this video is because there is a free version of this pattern, but I do recommend you purchasing the ad free version just to make it a lot simpler to follow the directions. Okay, so when you are making this or choosing what size you want to make, the pattern is extremely adjustable in every single step that there is for this campfire cardigan. Every step is so easy to adjust. When it comes to the size of the campfire cardigan that you want to make, grab a measuring tape. Take that measuring tape, go around your chest, your waist, your bust, whichever is the largest size that you want the campfire cardigan to get around. And then when you're making your hexagon shapes, your hexagon shapes will form an L. So it's like, so if you cut me down the middle, L shape, see the L and then L shape. So this, this however, you want this size to be needs to be one side of that L shape. Okay, cutting you in half. This half needs to be the same dimension as your L that you are making. Hopefully that makes some sense. <laughs> and then really, once you go off of that, it's just adding length, adding length, adding a hood and adding a border. That's it. It's going to be so simple. I can't wait to break this down for you, really show you how simple it is. The only stitch that we are utilizing is the granny stitch. So 
again, it's beginner friendly in that regard. It's the construction that is going to cause me to say maybe an advanced beginner or an intermediate level crocheter just because we are having to shape the shape and join the sections together. So I'd say advanced beginner, intermediate, but definitely more just advanced beginner because it is a granny square. It's just a granny square stitch. So I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the dimensions, if you have any other questions about meeting dimension, feel free to ask me. Things that are in the pattern that I am not going to address. So she has two different ways you can make the sleeve, either straight on or tapered. I went straight on. I chose that pattern because I felt like more people would be interested in making that version. Uh, if you need any help with that, feel free to reach out to me and ask. Also, another adjustable part. If you're making the L shape and you realize that the bigger you're getting this way, the armhole is also getting bigger and you don't want the armhole to be as big as, say, your torso section. There is a way to make adjustments. She specified in the pattern, and I'm gonna go ahead and let you reach out to me if you feel like you need some help in that in that area. And you can also, of course, reach out to her as well with the Make and Do crew, following the pattern, following the contact information, and letting her, the creator of the pattern, help you as well. Sound good? All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make this campfire cardigan. All right, so the materials that we're going to use for the campfire cardigan will include a yarn that is a size four weight, worsted medium, Aran, 10, 12 ply or 8 WPI sized yarn. Now there is going to be a difference between my tutorial and the actual pattern. In the actual pattern, she has a total of four different colors that she is utilizing in her pattern. She's going to label these colors A, B, C, and D. And when those pat uh, color changes come up in the pattern, I will address those for anybody who is choosing to make this campfire cardigan in multiple colors. For me, I am sticking with a color changing, self variegated color changing yarn. So I'm not going to be changing my yarn throughout the pattern. I'm just utilizing the same yarn throughout the entire pattern. Also, what I noticed between the difference in amounts of yarn that you will need, she used a lot more yarn than I did. And I'm not sure if that's just because of the brand used or the particular fabric or fiber of the yarn. I did notice that my, my my campfire cardigan came out a lot more loose and drapey and hers was a lot more structured and solid. So that is also probably a contributing factor on why I used less yarn than she did. However, my campfire cardigan did come out a lot more holy or uh, more gapped spaces between the stitches than hers. Her campfire cardigan came out a lot more solid and structured. So let me go ahead and just break down how much yarn we used. So for me, using this yarn, which is Red Heart Unforgettable in the color Polo, also a size four weight yarn, I used approximately 1,890 yards of yarn, 1,722 meters of yarn, 700 grams of yarn or 24.5 ounces of yarn. Now, to be honest, that's seven skeins of this, but I did not use all seven. That's how much I bought. That's probably how much you're gonna need to buy. There was still a significant amount of yarn that was left over at the end of the project, though it was not enough yarn for you to eliminate that whole skein. I used about a third, a quarter to a third of the skein of yarn for my seventh ball. So you can't, I would not eliminate or try to cut that out unless you were going, I made a cardigan sized um, medium large. So if you were going for a size small medium, maybe you could cut that out and just do six balls, okay? Now, her skeins, how many she used? She used 2,100 yards of yarn. I, I couldn't find the meters but it was 1,200 grams or 42 ounces of yarn. The number of skeins that she used, she has indicated in the pattern itself. So you can look, read it there, find that information there if you would like to. All right, so my best advice to you would be to get roughly that same amount of yarn, depending on the type of yarn that you are utilizing, and then keep your receipt just in case you need to return any yarn or if you need to buy any more because you underbought. Just, 
just to be careful, just to be safe. All right. Okay. So the crochet hook that we are going to be using is a size L or eight millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in all of those ends at the end of the project and optional, but you may find yourself needing them is stitch markers. Uh, this can help keep you on track. It's not something you vitally have to have, but it's a good option to have on hand if you need them. All right, I'm gonna have a link to everything you see here in both the comment section and description section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, purchase the item and have it sit directly to you. Uh, otherwise, uh, just go ahead and grab whatever you have on hand and let's get started making that campfire cardigan. Step one of the campfire cardigan is the creation of the hexagon shapes. Now this step is the most important step because it sets up the entire foundation for how big you want your campfire cardigan to be. When you look at the pattern, there are three sizes indicated that will be guided and helped along with throughout the entire pattern. These three sizes are a small medium, a medium large, and a large extra large size. If you would like to make your campfire cardigan smaller than the small medium, all you have to do is make less rounds of your hexagon to create the size that you desire. If you would like to make a larger campfire cardigan than the size large extra large, all you have to do is keep adding rounds to your hexagon until you have met your desired size. All right, super easy in this regard. There's a lot of adjustments that you can do throughout the pattern. If you are looking at the pattern itself, it will help guide you if you are trying to make a larger size campfire cardigan, but you don't want your armholes to also increase in size, it will help aid you in how you can adjust your arm size if you are increasing your torso size. And then there's also some help in the campfire cardigan pattern for helping you to know how to count your rounds, helping you to change colors. If you want to change colors, that is also a difference. In my tutorial that I'm going to be doing today, I am keeping the same color yarn throughout the entire project because my yarn is self color changing, self variegating. So I do not need to change the color of my yarn depending on what row or round I am on. If you are somebody that does want to change your colors, according, you want to self color control, you absolutely can. In the pattern, it will indicate when and where to use which color. And I will help step in and tell you, okay, we're now using color A, we are now using color B, and so on and so forth, just for that extra guidance. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the Campfire Cardigan Hexagon Shapes. We begin with a tail long enough for, to, for us to weave in the ends at the end of this project. Create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook. Perfect. The pattern calls for us to begin by chaining four. One, two, three, four. Slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring or a circle. Great. All right, so we're going to begin round one by making three chains. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch. Now make two double crochet stitches inside the circle or the ring. One, two, great. Then chain one and make three more double crochet stitches. One, two, three, perfect. And then chain one. Now these three double crochet stitches count as a section. They're going to be kind of grouped together. We want to make a total of six of these three double crochet sections for our hexagon shape. Get it? Hexagon is six. So let's go ahead and make, see we got one, chain one, two, chain one. We need to make four more groups of three double crochets and chain one. One, two, 
two, three, chain one, one, two, three, chain one. So there's one, two, three, four, okay, two more. One, two, three, chain one. Last group. One, two, three, chain one, and then slip stitch into the top of the third chain to close round one. One, two, three. Get that tail out of the way. Come on, tail, there we go. Slip stitch to close round one. There we go. Okay, so for round two of this hexagon shape, we're going to start by slip stitching into the top of the next two double crochet stitches. So next double crochet stitch, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that. There we go. And third double crochet stitch, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that. And then slip stitch into the chain one space. Now what we wanted to do is we really just wanted to get ourselves to that chain one space so we could start working inside that space. Okay, start officially starting round two. We will begin by chaining three. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch. Make two more double crochet stitches. One, two, great. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and make three more double crochet stitches in that same chain one space. One, two, three, perfect. And it creates kind of this peak in the middle of the group of three, just like that. Okay, so we chain one to hop over the group of three from the round below. And then in the next chain one space, we will repeat what we did before. We will make three double crochets, three chains, three double crochets, all in this chain one space. So here we go. Three double crochets. One, two, three, three chains. One, two, three, and three double crochets. One, two, three, perfect. And that's what it will look like right here. Great. So repeat this pattern all the way around for round two. We will chain one to hop over the group of three from the round before. And in the chain one spaces, we're going to go ahead and make three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. One, one, two, three. Okay, so one, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, and three double crochets. Great, repeat this all the way around. One, two, Okay, so what we are going to repeat all the way around for round two is chain one to hop over the three double crochet stitches 
and in every chain one space we're going to repeat the three double crochet chain three three double crochet you should end round two with a total of six of these groups so one two three four five six all right i will meet you at the end of round two to show you how we'll close off round two and begin round three three there we go chain one great and then slip stitch into the third chain to close off round two one two three slip stitch perfect all right let's move on to round three for round three let's go ahead and slip stitch in the top of the first or the next two double crochet stitches to get us to that chain three section so next double crochet stitch slip stitch third double crochet stitch, slip stitch. And now for me, I like to slip stitch into that chain three section to keep, to really clean it off. It seems to work out a lot better for me if I slip stitch into that chain three section before I begin. To begin round three, we will chain three. One, two, three. Again, that chain three does count as our very first double crochet stitch. In this chain three spot, we are going to make two more double crochet stitches, then three chains, and then three double crochet stitches. So here we go. One, two, then three chains, one, two, three, and then three double crochet stitches. One, two, three. Great. Chain one to hop over that double cro that group of three double crochet stitches. In the chain one space here, we will make three double crochet stitches. One, two, three, then chain one to hop over the next group of three double crochet stitches. Next group or next space here is a chain three. So in every chain three, we're gonna make three double crochet stitches, three chains, three double crochet stitches. One, two, three, three chains, one, two, three, three double crochet stitches, one, two, three, chain one to hop over that group of three double crochet stitches in the chain one space, in every single chain one space, you will make three double crochet stitches. One, two, three. Great. Chain one, hop over the group of three. Next is a group of three chains. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay this down for a second. When we come upon the three chains, three chains, that will be a point. The three chains are all the points of our hexagon shape. The chain one will be the middle of the row or the middle of the side. So here is a chain one. So I make three double crochets in the chain one spaces. In the chain three spaces, I make three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Repeat this pattern all the way around. You should end with a total of six of these groups of three, three, three and six of these groups of just three double crochet stitches. Continue on and I will meet you at the end of round three to show you what we do next. One, two, three. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, chain one, and one, two, three, chain one up. Oh. There's my last group for this round. Slipping, I'm gonna slip stitch into the first uh, double crochet stitch or the third chain of the chain three, and that closes off round three for me. So I'm gonna move my stitch marker here. There we go. To that first slip stitch. Perfect. All right, so when we work round four, again, we are slip stitching to that first chain three section or that that first space right there so we are going to go ahead and slip stitch on top of the second double crochet stitch slip stitch on top of the third double crochet stitch and then for me i like to slip stitch into the chain space because i think it makes it look cleaner okay and then we chain three one two three that chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch Begin with two double crochet stitches. One, two, chain three, one, two, three, and three double crochet stitches. One, two, three, chain one to hop over the group of three double crochet stitches. The next stitch space is just a chain one, so we will only be putting three double crochet stitches in there. One, two, three, then chain one, hop over the group of three. Oh, next space here is just a chain one, so again, we are only making three double crochet stitches one, two, three, chain one to hop over the group of three double crochet stitches. And then here is a chain three. So whenever we see a chain three, we're doing three double crochets, three chains, three double crochets, because that is a corner stitch. So one, two, three, then chain three, one, two, three, and then three double crochets, one, two, three, great, chaining one, hopping over the group of three, it's a chain one space, and I think you get the pattern, it's just a repeat pattern, so whenever you come up to a chain one space, you're just making one group of three double crochets. You'll chain one to hop over the group of double crochet stitches. Look for the chain. Is it just one? If it's just one, it's three double crochets. If it's three chains, then you make the three double crochets, chain three, three double crochet stitch like that. Okay, so repeat this all the way around for round four, and I will meet you at the end of round four to show you what we do next. One, two, three, one, two, three. In the pattern, you will notice that there are three different sizes that she has created, a small medium, a medium large, and a large extra large size. In her pattern, she's also color changing, self color changing. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you where she changed her colors right now. You will continue repeating this pattern over and over again. You will work color A until if you're working a small medium, you will work color A until you've reached the end of round seven. If you're making a medium large, you will continue color A until you've reached the end of round nine. If you're working a, a large extra large, you will continue color A until you've reached the end of round 11. Now remember to count starting from the middle, one, two, three, four, five, 
all the way up to help guide you when you're needing to do that color change if you're following the pattern. All right, then you switch to color B and you will work color B if you're making a small medium. You'll work color B through the end of round nine. If you're working a medium large, you will work color B through the end of round 11. If you're working a large extra large, you, you will work color B until you've worked the end of round 13. And then you'll switch to color C. If you're making a small medium size campfire cardigan, then you will work color C through the end of round 12. If you're making a medium large, you will work color C until you've made it to the end of round 14. If you're making a large extra large, you will work color C until you've worked through the end of round 16. Last color is color D. Now, if you're making a small medium, you will work color D just one row through the end of round 13. If you're working a medium large, again, just one row color D through the end of round 15. And if you're working a large extra large, you will work color D through the end of round 17, and then you will stop, okay? If you are choosing to just work one color yarn, like if you're working the self color changing variegated yarn here, then you will continue working the same yarn. If you're making a small medium, you will just continue working until you've reached the end of round 13, okay? If you're making a medium large size, you will just continue working this until you've reached the end of round 15. If you are making a large extra large size, you will just continue working this yarn until you've reached the end of round 17. Okay, so it is a long process. It will continue to grow and get bigger and bigger, but it's really easy peasy. You're just following the same pattern, just growing each side as you go round by round. All right. If you want to do a smaller size, like you want to work a child size version of the campfire cardigan, or if you want to make a larger size of the campfire cardigan, here is where you can make adjustments. So take two corners that are right next to each other and fold one on top of the other. Then take the next corner over and fold it to the next corner over and it'll just kind of naturally make this L shape right here. Okay, here is the chest measurement. So take the chest measurement of whoever you're making it for, if it's a child up through however big you want to make this campfire cardigan, you'll just measure your chest dimension all the way around. So measure all the way around yourself, okay? All the way around. So let's say, for example, you measured all the way around yourself and it came to 16 inches, okay? So take that uh, dimension, 16, divide it by two because we wanna take this circle and we want to flatten it out. We wanna find the diameter, okay? So whatever dimension you came up with, divide it by two. In this case, that would be eight, okay? Then come over to your L shape. And you know that we're gonna have to make a second hexagon on this side to mirror. So each hexagon you want to get to four inches because you'll do four inches this way and then you'll do the other armhole and the other mirrored side four inches this way to meet that chest dimension so it'll fit. Hopefully that makes sense. So if, for example, you have, you measure your, the biggest part of your torso. So whether that's the bust or the waist or the chest, whatever your biggest size is, that way this will fit, measure that part of your body all the way around. Okay, so let's say, Let's go to 52. Let's say that you measured around and you went to 52. Okay. Divide 52 in half. 25, 26. So that's going to be 26 inches. Okay. So 26 would be your diameter. That's how wide you're going to want 
both of these pieces side by side to be. So divide 26 in half, and that's 13. And 13 will be how wide I need to continue doing row after row after row after row. Continue folding it in half so it makes that L shape. Put the zero right there in the armpit. And then keep going until all your rounds reach that 13. And then you're done with your first hexagon. Then repeat it to make a second one for this side for your second hexagon. And then you have made your dimensions for your campfire cardigan to fit. That's all you have to do. So like I said, continue going round after round after round, making your first hexagon. Once you have finished with your first hexagon, make your second hexagon and then stop. And that is step one for the campfire cardigan. Now in the pattern, they did have some tips because the bigger you work this hexagon, the bigger your sleeve portion will also be. So if this is 13 inches long, or wide this way, then your arm hole will also be 13 inches wide this way. Some people were complaining that the arm hole was too big. So in the pattern, it does have some suggestions on what you can do to adjust the arm size. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you read that, figure that out. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. But that is what she has going on here for the campfire cardigan. What was the other thing? Oh, let's back it up. Let's say you are doing a color change. How you would do a color, a clean color change with your hexagon, okay? So let's say, there we go. You just closed a round. So slip stitching into the third chain to close your round. Perfect, and now you're ready to color change. So you will take your scissors, you will cut a long enough tail for you to weave in that end at the end of your project. Then you will yarn over and pull that tail through the loop on your crochet hook and pull tight, and that's a tie off for your round, okay? Then grab your next color Long enough tail for you to weave in the ends of that next color, creating your slip knot, attaching your crochet hook here. Go to the next chain three section. Insert your crochet hook into the chain three section. Slip stitch to attach your new color or attach your yarn to your project. Chain three, one, two, three. And then you know what to do. You know exactly what to do. You'll just do two more double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, like we did every single round to begin the new round. Okay? And I think, I think that answers everything. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. If I don't get to your comments and you are a follower of mine, please help a, help another follower out by helping answer the question for them. We're gonna help each other out to make sure that we can get this accomplished, okay? All right, I think that's it. Go ahead and finish two of these hexagon shapes, meeting the size requirement that you need it to make to fit either you or whoever you are giving it to. And then I will meet you once you have finished both of these hexagons to show you how we join the two hexagons together and move on to the next step of the campfire cardigan. Step two of the campfire cardigan, we're going to take both of our hexagon shapes that we have created and we are going to make L shapes with them. So I'm gonna open them up, open this side up. Perfect. And I am going to go corner to corner, next corner to next corner. And that ends with these two corners together and that will form this beautiful L shape. All right, and then we're gonna do that again with our second hexagon. So spread out the hexagon. There we go.
Okay, so corner to corner. Next corner will go to the next corner. And then the last two corners just kind of fold together by themselves, but corner to corner. And that will form an L shape right here. Now we're gonna take this side and I'm going to flip it so that we look like we actually have a cardigan here. <laughs> so this L shape will go this way. This L shape will go this way. For step two, we are going to be seaming these sides together. So I'm gonna open this up a bit. We're not going to seam these together, but we will seam the back together to close it. And we will seam the top of this arm together. So what you're gonna need for step two is a whole bunch of stitch markers. So you're gonna want a whole bunch of stitch markers and you're going to need a yarn needle or tapestry needle and your yarn. So for our project that I, or the project that I'm working on, I'm using just a self variegating or self color changing yarn in the same skein. So I'm just going to continue using the same skein that I have been using for my project. If you chose to change the color every so often for sections of, individual color, then you're going to use color D or the last color you used to go around your hexagon. And you're going to use that color to seam up the back and to seam the tops of the sleeves together. Okay. So here's what we're going to do first and foremost. Hopefully you have your L shapes in this exact shape that I have. So it looks like a top we're going to take our first stitch marker, come to the very bottom. Now with our corners, our corners should have three chains in each corner. So we're going to find that second or middle chain and I'm going to put my stitch marker in that chain. Then I'm going to come over to this side, find the corner, the three chains, find the second or middle chain and I'm going to attach my same stitch marker there to join. Okay, then I'm going to come to the top, grab another stitch marker, same corner, finding the second or middle chain. There we go. And same thing on this side. Now I don't want to just insert my stitch marker through the big opening. I don't wanna just place it in this opening here because then everything has the ability to continue to shift and I don't want anything to shift. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is come to this sleeve, the edge of this sleeve, new stitch marker, second or middle chain, second or middle chain. There we go. Okay, and then last little end of sleeve here. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so we have our main corners attached to each other now. What I want to do or what I'm going to do to make sure when I seam this together that it doesn't shift anywhere in particular, every so often or about every four of these sections, I'm going to add a stitch marker. So I'm gonna grab another stitch marker. I'm going to actually join up my sides. So I have my three double crochet group next to my three double cro crochet groups really kind of line these up. And then this chain one, I'm going to insert my crush, my stitch marker here in the chain one. Perfect. Okay, shift this down a little bit and keep going. So you honestly could do more stitch markers than I'm doing or less. This is completely up to you on what you would like to do. I am finding that four seems to be okay for me. There we go. And then one, two, three, four, 
can put one more right there. There we go. So now when I go to seam this up, I can keep myself on track that everything isn't shifting too much while I'm going and then I'm happy at the end that everything looks nice, tidy, and straight. So these two corners right here, we are going to join the tops of them. So here's like the front of the cardigan. So let's go ahead and find the second or middle chain right there and attach. So when it comes to us seaming up the tops of the sleeves, we are literally going to start in the corner and attach both of these sleeves all the way up to the middle here. Okay, so all the way up to this middle and then we will continue on to the other side of the arm. So we want to keep these two together so that way everything again stays together, stays in line and doesn't shift. So what I'm gonna have you do real quick is we're gonna turn this long ways. So I'm looking at one sleeve and I'm going to join these two together with more stitch markers. So again, I'm gonna line up my sections and these are really gonna wanna shift. So this is actually a great opportunity for you to keep everything on track. So keep everything and then right there, join that chain one. So go ahead and continue all the way along the top of your cardigan here with your stitch markers, placing your stitch markers and I'll meet you at the end and we will start seaming these together. All right, great. Now that we have added all of our stitch markers, joining our two hexagon shapes together, adding the top of the sleeves and the back of the garment, what I'm gonna have you do is flip this over so we are looking at the back. There we go. Perfect. We are gonna work the back first, seaming up this side, and then we're going to work the top of the sleeves starting in this corner and finishing in this corner. It's just the cleanest way to address that top join right here where you're going this way and that way. All right, so if you've never heard the terms right side or wrong side of the work before, we are working or looking at the right side of the work. What that means is the side that we're looking at is the side that everybody else is gonna see. It's the side that's gonna show out to people. It's going to be the outside of the garment. If I were to flip it over, this side would be the inside of the garment, also known as the wrong side, okay? So we are looking at the right side of the garment. This is important to note if you are doing a particular seaming or joining stitch. Some joining stitches want you to be looking at the right side. Some joining stitches want you to be looking at the wrong side. All right, so the joining stitch that we are using in this tutorial or the one that is used in the pattern itself is called the mattress stitch or the mattress seam join. Okay, you can use whatever join you want. If you have another preferred joining method, use that. It's not a big deal. This is just the one that she used in the pattern, okay? So I'm gonna start down here. Grab your yarn needle or tapestry needle. Grab a pretty long strand of yarn that either the color D that you used in the pattern or just the yarn that you are using from the self-changing skein that we are using for this particular campfire cardigan. Now for the mattress stitch, it wants us to thread the yarn all the way and join the two ends together. Okay, so two ends together. There we go. And tie a knot in the ends so they stay level with each other. There we go. Perfect, we're ready to begin. So I'm gonna remove this stitch marker so I can work in this corner. Great, and zoom in so we can see what's going on. 
Perfect. All right, so looking at the corners, we have three chains in the corner stitch. We're gonna take our yarn needle, tapestry needle, find the second or middle chain on this side, and we're gonna go from the back to the front. And then we're gonna come on this side, find the chain three corner, find the second chain or middle chain, and go from the front to the back. Just like that. And then because this is a beginning, I'm going to tie a knot here just so that everything stays put and it doesn't slide out on me. Okay, so coming from the back of the work, we're gonna start on this side and end on this side. So it's always gonna go whoop, over and over and over. So next stitch over is right here. It's just a chain because it would be either the first or third chain on this side. And then we're gonna go over to this side, which should just be a chain and go front to back. Okay, next stitch, double crochet stitch, gonna go back to front and the adjoining stitch, which would be a double crochet stitch, will go front to back. Now what's great about this pattern is it should be a one-to-one -one ratio. The stitches should perfectly align here, okay? That's why it was so important that we added all of the stitch markers. It should go double crochet to double crochet, chain to chain, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, but chain to chain. You wanna keep track of this, keep an eye on it because this will very easily shift on you. And then all of a sudden you're adding a double crochet stitch into the chain and everything has shifted and you get to the end and you're like, why is one side still have so much left over? It's because of the shift. So be very careful, cautious, pay attention here. Okay, so going to go from the back to the front and the front to the back. And then the back to the front and the front to the back. And that is the repeat we're doing all the way along this, this seam right here, all the way up. Here's the chain, so I'm gonna go from the back to the front. And then next chain, because remember, adjoining stitches, front to back. Now what's so great about the mattress stitch seam or join is that, let me go ahead and do this next one where I'm back to front. When you get so far in the process, in the work, you grab the tail, grab your work and if you pull, then the join becomes invisible or you really don't even see that it's there. So it just kind of overlays smoothly where the seam is. There is no protruding seam right here. It just lays flat, which I understand why she chose this particular join or seam method. All right, so go ahead and continue. Here, let me zoom out a little bit. Let me go ahead and continue. So we just came back to front. Now we're gonna go front to back. All the way up, I will meet you. I will meet you here at the top to show you how we will end here and then we will begin here together. All right, you're doing great, you've got this. coming upon the top of the back seam here. There we go, moving that. Now I wanna be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two. So what this stitch marker was holding was basically the front to the back and the same with this stitch marker 
folding the front to the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this. So I've got chain one, chain one, and then chain two, and chain two. Okay, great. So I have just finished all the way up the back. I'm gonna pull this tight. Periodically throughout the back, I have, I'd go, I'd go a ways and then I'd pull and then I'd go a ways and then I'd pull. So now this is how the back is looking. Now, before I tie this off, I'm gonna look at the whole back and make sure I didn't extra, I did not extra pull anywhere and make it bunch. You know, I don't want, I don't want it to be scrunched anywhere. That would be bad. So I want to go and I want to make sure that everything is looking, see right here, it looks a little scrunched. Might pull that up a little bit. Pull that up a little. There we go. Looking a little scrunched right here too, so I'm gonna pull that up. Make sure it looks like it is laying flat. That's my goal. Okay, I think, I think that's good. So I'm going to take my yarn needle, tapestry needle. I'm gonna go in from the back to the front of the same second stitch that I already put a stitch into, but I'm gonna hold my finger back here. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm gonna twist it so it forms this X shape right there. Here, let me zoom in right there. Okay, so what I just did is I inserted my yarn needle into that same second chain there, stitch, held back some yarn. I'm gonna take that yarn and I'm going to flip it so it forms like this X shape. I'm gonna take my yarn needle, go underneath, through, and then slowly feed it so that knot will form where I want it to and not like way up top and have a bunch of slack. And that is me tying off my work right there. Okay, grabbing my scissors, releasing that yarn needle. And the back seam is done, it's complete. So the next thing we're going to do is you can decide if you wanna start with this sleeve or this one. We're gonna move this sideways, shift it so I can start working along the top of the sleeve and I'm gonna keep working this all the way across to the end of the next sleeve here, okay? When it comes to this middle section where we have this open, this openness from the two hexagon shapes in the front, I will meet up with you here in the middle to show you how I get past this and keep going, just in case that part got has you a little nervous. All right, so. Beginning exactly like we did with the back. Yarn needle, yarn, long bit of yarn. Remember, if you need to, you can, if you run out of yarn, you can always tie it off and reattach more yarn. Okay, so feeding that through and remember it's a doubled over, so we're going to find the other end. Take the two ends and tie a knot in them. There we go. All right, here's our yarn needle. Going for the corner. Now, if you need to, if it's easier for you, take the sleeve and open it up this way. Let me grab a piece of paper so I can show you how that'll look. So if I have this piece of paper, I slide that in. Now it's easier for you to see stitch to stitch. If you need to, if you're looking at it in person, it's probably, probably a lot easier, but 
For the demonstration, I'll use the paper. So again, corner, finding the second chain here of the corner, gonna go underneath from the bottom to the top. And then over, finding the second or middle chain, gonna go from the top to the bottom. Great, take these two ends and tie them so that way they don't go anywhere. There we go. So next would be a chain, so bottom to top. And other side, top to bottom. Keep going, I will meet you in the center of the garment where the two hexagons end and we're joining the hexagon shapes together, okay? You got this. You're doing such a great job. All right, we have just made it to the center of the top where we are seaming up the tops of our sleeves. Right here is where we seamed the back of our campfire cardigan. And right here is where I'm about to go from one hexagon to the, ex uh, to the other hexagon here. So I wanted to just show you how I get across right here. I just managed to do So one, two, three, one, two, three of my double crochets. I'm onto my first chain. So first chain, bottom to top. Did I grab it? I, there I go. And chain over here, first chain, top to bottom. Great. Now we already have something in that middle or second chain that's already taken by our join going this direction. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to go into that second chain here that my little stitch marker was in. So second chain, go from the bottom to the top. Now the second chain here already has something in it, so top to bottom. This will just make everything cohesive, everything kind of come together. Great, now I'm gonna to come to the next hexagon shape. Find the corner, find the second chain, go from bottom to top, come to this hexagon, this second corner where there already is a stitch here from the seam going this direction from the back, go from the top to the bottom and we keep moving forward. So next is a chain, it'd be the next chain over. Go from the back to the front, come over, next chain over, go from the front to the back. Great, and then keep going like we know how to do. And that is how I get past that middle join where we have the join from the back coming up this way and then the two hexagons splitting from the front because this will be the front of the campfire cardigan but where we join the two hexagons together here in that middle join all right you got this go ahead and finish this off guys all the way finish this other sleeve all the way across tie it off and then we are ready to move on to step three For step three of the campfire cardigan, we are going to start building upon the bottom section of the campfire cardigan, growing it longer. So go ahead and take your two hexagon shapes that you've already seamed together, and we're going to rotate them, flip them, so we are looking at the bottom section of the campfire cardigan, and we are going to build by making row after row after row this way, and that's how we're gonna grow the length. Now there are two different ways you're probably approaching this campfire cardigan. The first way is you're using one type of yarn or one skin of yarn that is color changing on its own, it's self-variegated, 
or you're doing one solid color, or you are choosing to color change on your own. You control the color changes when you switch your colors. In the pattern, she does this. She instructs you when to switch to which color. If you are doing the controlled color change, she has you starting with color A, whatever you used for color A. That's what you will attach here. Okay, so beginning with your yarn, starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project, creating our slip knot, attaching our crochet hook. We attach the yarn in the corner, looking at the chain three. We're gonna find the middle chain or that second chain and slip stitch into it. and that attaches the yarn to the project. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch. Now I'm following row one of the pattern for the, the bottom section of the campfire cardigan. It says to make two double crochet stitches in that first space here. So in that chain three space of the corner, we're going to make two more double crochet stitches. One, two, and then we will chain one to hop over the cluster of three double crochets from the row below, and then make three double crochet stitches in the next chain one space. One, two, three, perfect. And then chain one to hop over the cluster of three double crochet stitches and make three double crochet stitches in the next chain one space. And that's the repeat pattern all the way around the bottom row for this row one of the campfire cardigan. I'm going to go ahead and keep going and I will meet you where these two hexagon shapes meet or were seamed together so I can show you how to hop over this because I can see that being a spot where people have questions. So go ahead and continue on and I'll meet you right there. Okay, so I just got to the section where I am at the seam. And so what you will do is you will chain one to hop over that group of three double crochet stitches, which I've already done, chain one. In this chain one section, you will make three double crochet stitches. One, two, three, then you will chain one, hop over the seam, and make three more double crochet stitches in this chain one space. One, two, three, perfect. And then you're on your way to finishing off this whole row. Go ahead and continue working this three double crochet, chain one, across row one. Now I'll meet you at the end of row one to show you what we do next. All right, making it to the end of row one, making three double crochet stitches in that corner, last chain one space. And that is how we finish row one of the bottom section of our campfire cardigan. Now to move on to row two, we will chain four. One, two, three, four. We will turn our work. There we go. Make sure it stays because it's now getting heavy. <laughs> All right.
right, so that chain four counts as our first double crochet stitch to get us onto the next round or row. And your chain one, what we're going to do is we're going to hop over this chain, or three double crochet cluster group right here and start row two by making three double crochet stitches in this chain one space. So I'll take my pinky sometimes and hold back that chain four just to help me with my tension. And then one, two, three, and then you continue the pattern where you chain one, hop over that three double crochet stitches and make three double crochet stitches in this chain one space. You'll repeat this all the way across row two. You won't have to worry about the seam join anymore because we've already addressed that. I will meet you at the end of row two to show you what we do next. Three. All right, so when you make it to the end of row two, you'll notice that there is no other chain one spot for you to attach anything to. So what you're going to do after you make your three double crochet stitches in this chain one space, you're going to chain one and end with one double crochet stitch in the third chain of our turning chain that we made here. So find one, two, three, and double crochet into that third chain. And that is how we will close off row two. Right there, perfect. All right, so for the rest of our bottom portion of our campfire cardigan, we are just rotating or repeating row one, row two, row one, row two. That's all we're doing. The only thing that you need to watch in the pattern is if you are self color changing. If you are self color changing, this is how they will address that in the pattern. Let's say that you just finished color A and you're ready to switch to the next color. So taking your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in any ends. Then you'll yarn over that tail, pull the tail through the loop on your crochet hook and tie off your work. So it's a clean color change, clean tie off. And then we will flip our work like this then you will grab your next color that you plan on using starting with a long enough tail to weave in your ends create your slip knot attach your crochet hook perfect if you are attaching to you ended your row and it's one double crochet stitch and then a chain one it looks like this then you will slip stitch into the top of that double crochet stitch to attach your yarn. If you are attaching and it looks like this other side where it is, oh, we'll say that we're attaching here where there's three double crochet stitches right there. We will just go ahead and attach into the first double crochet stitch and then chain to move on to the next row. Okay, so either way, you're going to slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet stitch, either it's a cluster of three, or it is like we just made that one double crochet stitch, you will just slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet. There we go. So slip stitch, attaching your new yarn. And then depending on the pattern, remember we are repeating row one and row two. So here I just did a row two. So I'm going to go backwards to a row one where I will chain three, one, two, three. That chain three counts as my first double crochet stitch. And then I will make two more double crochet stitches in this chain one space, one, two and then I continue on doing a chain one and three double crochet stitches in that chain one space one boop, two and 
three. Perfect. If you have any questions over what to do next, just refer back to what we do for row one and what we do for row two. I will put timestamps for both of these rows in the description section and comment section below this video. So that way it's an easy timestamp for you to just fast quick get to that step so you know what you are doing. So go ahead, continue working row one and row two. If you are working a size small, medium, you will repeat these rows until you reach the end of row 17. If you are making a size medium large or large extra large, you will you will repeat these rows until you reach the end of row 19. Now, of course, this is your campfire cardigan. So if you wanna make your campfire cardigan shorter or longer, go for it. What I recommend that you do is if you do want to change the number of rows, uh, make it different than what the pattern explains or shows you to do, then get a tape measure and measure out your campfire cardigan to see where you're at. If you're making it for yourself, try it on, see if that's where you like it. Or if you just know the dimensions of the person you are making it for, keep checking to make sure, is this campfire cardigan gonna be too short, too long, or just right. This is your campfire cardigan or the one you are making. So go ahead and deviate here if you would like and make it as long as you want or as short as you want. It's your cardigan, you're making it. Go ahead and make it the way you wanna make it. But if you're following the pattern, yes, small medium will end after row 17 and uh, medium large or large extra large will end at the end of row 19. I will meet you at the end of this bottom section showing you how to close off step three and then we will move on to step four which is the sleeves. All right, so I just finished the bottom portion of my campfire cardigan. I went to row 19 for mine because I'm making a medium large size for myself and I tied this off. We are ready to move on to the next step. Step four of the campfire cardigan is going to be the sleeves. So let's go ahead and focus on repositioning our campfire cardigan so that way we can See that sleeve portion. There we go. Okay, so here's that sleeve number one. Now for me, I am not doing the tapered sleeve option. I'm doing the non-tapered sleeve option. What that means is the sleeve is going to stay just straight to finish. It's not going to stay straight this way, but start coming in this way. If you would like to do a tapered sleeve, the instructions are pretty clear on how to do that. It's definitely a more intermediate level pattern to do the tapered sleeve. And if you're an intermediate level crocheter, you most likely know how to read the pattern. But if you do have questions on that, feel free to ask me and I can help. I just know there were two options and I decided to show the easier option so that way I'm not providing too much information. All right, so starting with the tail long enough for us to weave in the end at the end of the project, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to begin here where we joined the two sides together. There's already kind of a join right there. So in that chain space right here, inserting my crochet hook. I'm gonna slip stitch just to join my yarn to the project. Perfect, and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Now that chain three counts as my first double crochet stitch of this section. We will make two more double crochet stitches in the same chain one space. One, two perfect and then you should be very familiar with what to do next we're just going to chain one to hop over the cluster from below and then find the next chain one space here and make three double crochet stitches one two three perfect and then chain one 
hop over the cluster, find the next chain one space and make three double crochet stitches. Continue this pattern all the way around this sleeve. So we're gonna continue this pattern. Let me zoom out all the way around this sleeve. I will meet you right here where we get ready to close row or round one of the sleeve, and then I'll show you what we do next for the repeating rows. You're doing great. Keep up the good work. And last space here for round one of our sleeve. One, two, and three. Great, chain one. That way we can make sure when we close this round, we have everything consistent here, okay? So to close round one of our sleeve, we, we will slip stitch into the top of the third chain of that very first chain three we made because that first chain three counted as our very first double crochet stitch. So one, two, three, slip stitch right there, and that closes round one of our sleeve. Now to move on to round two, and really for every single round of the sleeve here on out, you will slip stitch on, in the top of every stitch until you reach the, the chain one space. So finding this next double crochet, I will slip stitch. Next double crochet, I will slip stitch. And then go ahead and slip stitch into the chain one space just to enter into that space. Perfect. Now we are all set up to actually officially begin round two of our sleeve. Start by chaining three. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our very first double crochet stitch. Then make two more double crochet stitches inside that chain one space. One, Two, perfect. And then repeat our normal pattern where we chain one to hop over the three double crochets and make three double crochet stitches in the chain one space. Now we're going to repeat round two for a total of 17 rounds, or at least that is what is indicated in the pattern. Feel free to keep trying this on and seeing how it fits you and how long you want your sleeve to be, and you can stop at whatever round you need to say, okay, my sleeve is long enough. You can add rounds or subtract rounds from the pattern, making this your own, making it fit you, okay? So just repeat what we do in round two, where you slip stitch in the third chain to close the round, and then slip stitch on the top of every stitch space until you get to that chain one space. Slip stitch into the chain one space, chain three to begin, and then you're off. All right, same thing over and over and over. I will meet you at the end of your desired length to show you how she closes off the sleeve with round 18. One, two, three, and three, chain one, slip stitch in the third chain, one, two, three. Perfect, I've just closed round 17. Now for me, round 17 was actually a little long. When I tried this on, the sleeve went past my fingertips, but I was okay with it. It actually looked really cool. So I was like, that's all right with me. Now, depending on what you wanted, if you wanted to take out some rounds, and make the sleeve shorter, go for it. Add some rounds to make the sleeve longer, go for it. This is your cardigan, make it however you want it. All right, so when it comes to the next round, which for me is round 18, and that's what I'm following in the pattern right now, how we will work round 18. We will chain one. We will single crochet in the same stitch we just slip stitched into, so single crochet. And we will single crochet on the top of every double crochet stitch. So 
so double crochet double crochet when we come to the chain one spaces we're actually going to ignore that entirely we're going to skip over it find the next double crochet stitch and single crochet on top of that double crochet stitch and that is the repeat pattern for round 18. we're going to ignore every chain one space skip over it find the next double crochet stitch and continue making a single crochet stitch in the top of every double crochet stitch around. Continue on and I will meet you at the end of my round 18 to show you how we will close the round and what we do for round 19 or the very last round of the sleeve. And then we're done with sleeve one and we can move on to sleeve two. All right, to close round 18, we will slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch that we started with, and that will close round 18. For round 19, the very last round of our sleeve, we're just gonna chain one and then make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. And you will end round 19 by slip stitching into the top of the very first single crochet stitch that we began with. Once you are done with round 19, we are done with this sleeve. Just repeat everything we did for this sleeve on the other side for your other sleeve. And then we are done with step four and ready to move on to step five, which is the hood. Oh, we are so close, guys. We are now ready for step five, and the step five is the hood of the campfire cardigan. So I have here laid out my campfire cardigan, so that way it's facing away from me, and I can start working along the right side of the work or the front-facing part of the work, and just continue working along this section right here. Now in the pattern, it wants to point out this join section right here. Right here, we have joined this section of the hexagon all the way up. And we've also joined this section and this section of the sleeve. So a total, there is join one, join two, and join three. Now, when we are making the hood, how she wants us to approach these joins, right here. She wants us to work the three double crochet stitches in the chain one space, then chain one to hop over the join, make three double crochet stitches in the chain one space here, chain one to hop over the join, three double crochet stitches here, chain one to hop over the join, and then three double crochet stitches here and continue the pattern on down as we would. So she wants us to treat those joins as an actual grouping that we need to chain one to hop over, okay? So I wanted to make sure I pointed out there's one, two, three here that we will chain one to hop over. Great, all right, so before we begin, let's mark where we are going to work. So I have my stitch marker and I have my crochet hook looking on the one side, looking on one side of the work, not going to specify right or left, but just one side, starting at the join here, finding the first chain one right after the join, we're going to count six spaces. So six chain one spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now in this one, I'm going to put my crochet hook because that's where I'm going to begin. Now come back to the join up on the top, count six along the other side. So here is the join for the sleeve. Got chain one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna put a stitch marker in there so that way I know that is the last chain one space that I'm going to work for the hood. Okay, 
Now, of course, if you want to make your hood a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, you can change anything up as you go. Grabbing your yarn. Refer to the pattern if you are color changing because in the pattern she has exactly where to color change and what colors to utilize for that color change if you're following her exactly. For me, I'm using the exact same yarn. I'm not color changing at all. Okay, so start with a tail long enough for us to weave in that end. Create the slip knot. And I'm using my crochet hook to mark my spot. So I'm going to release that, put my fingers in there. Attach my crochet hook. Perfect, and we're ready to begin. So let's go ahead and slip stitch into that same space that we know we are beginning the hood. So just insert your crochet hook right in that big space, yarn over, and slip stitch. This position's making me struggle. Okay, there we go. Slip stitch. Now I'm going to rotate so I can work more efficiently. To begin this first space, we just chain three. One, two, three. That chain three counts as our very first double crochet stitch. We will make two more double crochet stitches in the same space. Then chain one to hop over the group of three and make three double crochet stitches in the next space, and then chain one, three double crochets in the next space. Continue this pattern up to the join. I will work the join with you just because it is a little funky, and then we'll be off to the other side. So two more double crochet stitches. One, two, chain one, Hop over that group, three double crochet stitches. One, two, three. Okay, so I've made it to my first join. Again, skipping the three double crochet stitches, finding the chain one, making three double crochet stitches. So one, two, three. Here's that join. So I'm gonna chain one, see the join, find this space right here. Make sure you can see it. So I have join, join, big chain one space right here. I'm gonna make three double crochet stitches in that chain one space between the joins. One, two, three, then I have a join, so I'm going to chain one and hop over that join. See the other join here? The join here, the join there. Space in between. I'm going to make three double crochet stitches in this space in between. One. This will also, two, three, help to make sure there's no gaps or big holes at the top of the hood. Okay, here's that join right there. I'm going to chain one, hop over that join, and then on this other side, if you need help with the other side, find the groups of three below where you're working. So I have three right there, three right here. I know that there is a chain one in between. So I'm going to find it and then make three double crochet stitches in that space. Two, three, chain one to hop over that group. And now we are off to the other side. So I'm gonna shift this again. 
a lot of shifting. Okay, so go ahead and work this other side where it's exactly what we did on the first side. Chain one to hop over the group of three, make three double crochet in the chain one space all the way down to where your stitch marker is. In that stitch marker space, make your three double crochet stitches and then pause because we will then be moving on to row two of our hood. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, Last space here, got our stitch marker in it. I'm actually gonna remove the stitch marker so it gets out of my way. There we go. And one, two, three, great. Okay, so we just finished row one of our hood. To move on to row two, now for me, I am sticking with the same yarn, so I am just gonna move on to row two. If you are changing your color following the pattern, this is where she does a color change. So to move on to row two, we will start by chaining four. One, two, three, Oop, four. All right, let's turn our work as much as you possibly can. This thing has gotten quite large now. Now row two is significantly easier because we don't have to worry about that join space. Turn. Okay. Hopefully you can see everything all right. There's a lot of colors mixing as I am working on top of other work. When it comes to row two, that chain four we just made counts as our first double crochet stitch and our first chain one to help us hop over that first group of three. We will instantly start working in the chain one space with three double crochet stitches. One, two, three, and you got it, you know the pattern. We're gonna chain one, hop over the group of three and three double crochet. Repeat this pattern all the way around this hood and I will meet you at the end of row two here to show us or to show you how we will work row three and then you'll have the repeat pattern to finish off the hood section of the campfire cardigan. One, two, three, chain one, okay, I've made my way to the end of row two of the hood. Here's where I'm at. I'm going to chain one and finish off row two by double crocheting into the third chain of that first chain three here. There we go. Double crochet, perfect. And that closes off row two. Now for row three, we will chain three. One, two, three. We will turn our work. And now that the hood is more pronounced, I can have the rest of the body of the campfire cardigan towards me as I'm just going back and forth with the hood. Now the hood is gonna end up looking like a large rectangle. So as we are working, it'll just look like this flat rectangle that is building up. When we are done with this actual hood rectangle part, we will join the top to close up the hood and then it will officially look like a hood. 
for row three of the hood. This is how it begins. That chain three counts as our first double crochet stitch. We will make two more double crochet stitches inside this chain one space. One, two, perfect. Then chain one, hop over the group of three and you know the pattern. Now, when it comes to this pattern, you're just repeating row two, row three, row two, row three. That's all you gotta do. Here is where it's gonna change though. If you look at the pattern, you will notice with row five, row nine, row 13, and row 17, there is an increase. That's an increase row. That's where we are going to expand the hood and make it a little more comfortable to wear, okay? So continue working the sides, the ends, and the beginnings of each, of each row, just doing the repeat of row two, row three, row two, row three. I'm going to meet up with you at row five to show you how row five is different. And then I'll show you how each increase row is a little bit different. Okay, so we are on row three right now. I will meet you at row five to show you how that one looks a little bit different. Okay, made my way to the end of row four, double crocheting in the top of the first double crochet stitch to close row four. Great, okay, so now we are on to row five. And I said that I would meet up with you at row five because it is the very first increase row of the pattern where the hood starts to grow a little bit. And I wanted to walk you through that. So to start row five, we will begin by chaining two or chaining three, one, two, three, turning our work. That chain three counts as our very first double crochet stitch. We will make two more double crochet stitches in this chain one space. One, two, then chain one. Now what we're going to do, and this is how I kind of differ from the pattern. Now you can absolutely follow the pattern completely. However, I found that my my work was a little bit different from the pattern. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working in the first seven spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you want, you can put a stitch marker there or you can just count as you go, whichever works better for you. There we go. This thing is heavy now. Okay, so I got one, and then two, and then three, one, two, three, chain one, and then four, five, six, one, two, three, and seven. So I'm gonna remove my stitch marker here. Work seven. One, two, three, chain one. And now to work that increase, we will make three double crochet stitches in the second double crochet stitch here of the three double crochets. So, One, two, 
three, then chain one again. And now start working in the chain one spaces. And that is an increase. Two, three. And there should be a total of seven chain one spaces along this side to make it even. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, seven. There we go. Okay, so we worked the exact center of row five to place our increase. And now we're good to go. So continue working each row exactly as we did before, repeating row two, row three, row two, row three. And I will meet you in row seven or row nine. Row nine is where we do our next increase. And after row nine, I think you'll get it and you'll be able to do the increase just fine on row 13 and row 17 all on your own. So let's get to row nine. Okay, so ending row eight right here. Perfect. Let's make our way to row nine. So chaining, chaining three, one, two, three, turning our work. Now row nine is our next increase row. And you might think, okay, I'm going to go ahead and make eight or, or make eight groupings on one side, then do my increase and then eight groupings on the other side. However, you would be wrong. Let's go ahead and work it and I will show you why that would be wrong. We're going to start by making our pattern in the first eight groupings. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker right there. Here we go. Going to work up to that spot and then show you the difference. Okay, I made it to the stitch marker. Going to remove the stitch marker, make my three double crochet stitches in that space. One, two, three, perfect. Okay, so I have my eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at the other side. There is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven spaces and that's okay. The reason why they are not even on both sides is because in row five, when we did our first increase, we only added one grouping of three, making an even number and odd number of groupings in that row. This will all be fixed after this row. So let's go ahead and chain one. In that next group of three, we will make three double crochet stitches in that second double crochet stitch. One, two, three, then chain one and go about the pattern. One, two, three. And then we will just go ahead and continue working the pattern chain one, three double crochet all the way across. Now we have an even number of these groupings of three double crochet. So when we come to our next increase row, row 13, we should have an even number of eight space chain one spaces on one side and eight chain one spaces on the other side. And we'll do our increase right in the middle. But then we will offset it again. So when you get to row 17 to do your last increase row, you'll have nine spaces on one side and eight spaces on the other. And that will be the last row for increasing. And then you'll finish it off, okay? So I'll go ahead and put a little written chart here on the screen 
to just kind of help you write this down if you need to. So for row five, your first increase row, you had seven chain one spaces and seven chain one spaces. Row nine, you had eight chain one spaces and then seven chain one spaces. Row 13, you'll have eight chain one spaces and eight chain one spaces. And then row 17, you'll have nine chain one spaces and eight chain one spaces between the increase that you make. Okay, I hope that helps. It, will, it helped me a lot uh, to get through the pattern, but if you are finding that you're following the pattern just fine, then just ignore what I just said. It's totally fine. It's just what I found I needed for this to work. All right, go ahead and continue working this pattern until you reach the end of row 24. The hood is made the exact same for all sizes. So at the end of row 24, I will meet up with you and we will seam or join the top to complete the hood, complete step five and move on to step six, which is the very last step. And that is the border for the entire campfire cardigan. You are doing such a fantastic job. I am so incredibly proud of you. I hope that you're having a great time and I will see you very soon. Guys, we are on the last step of the campfire cardigan here. Last step is just making the border around the entire cardigan to clean up all of the join sections that we have made and also just to finish it up and make it look complete. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our crochet hook. And for me, I'm utilizing the same yarn that I've been using the entire project. But if you are doing the color change, she does specify that you use color D, whatever you used for color D. Okay, so I'm gonna move this off to the side. Right here I have this laid out, here's the hood, here is arm and arm. So this is how I have it laid out. Let me go ahead and shuffle it to where we're going to begin. We are going to begin and join right where the hood meets the shoulder, okay? So I want to work along the right side of the work. So depending on if you're looking at this from the left side or the right side, go at this project according to however you need to, to start working on the work with this being the right side. So I'm gonna shuffle the cardigan this way. Here I have my hood, the rest of the cardigan. Okay, beginning with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends. Currently, all of your other ends should already be woven into the project and out of our way. There we go, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna slip stitch to attach our yarn. So here is the hood. And then here is the shoulder and here is where they attached to each other. So this right here is the actual cardigan. This is the hood. I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the cardigan part. Slip stitch to attach. There we go. And chain three. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our very first double crochet stitch. Make two more double crochet stitches in that same chain one space. One, two, then chain one and continue on to the hood, finding the next open space. And we're working in the open spaces here and we're just continuing that three double crochet chain one pattern all the way around the campfire cardigan. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make my way to the join of the hood, show you how we get over the join and then make our way to the other side. Okay, I have reached the top of the hood here where there was the join. I wanted to address this just in case anyone had any questions. So here at the top of the join, we see the two groups of three double crochet stitches that were joined together. We're gonna treat this as if it was just one grouping. 
So after we make our three double crochet stitches, we're gonna chain one. We're gonna hop over everything, making our way to the next space, and then make our three double crochet stitches. Now this will help to join everything together. It'll help to pull that hood inward at the top, kind of bringing everything in, and it'll also help to clean everything up on the front of the hood here. Great, okay? And then you just continue on. I think that you're good to go. I don't see anyone have any other questions. When you get to the other side of the hood where it joins the actual cardigan here. So here's the hood. Here's the join to the actual cardigan. You're just going to skip over this group of three and dive into the same space here and then just continue down the side of your cardigan. I'm going to meet up with you at the very bottom of the side where we have the corner going along the bottom of the cardigan. And I'm gonna show you how we get around this corner and start working along the bottom. Great, we have just made it to our first corner here at the bottom of the campfire cardigan. So right here we have finished working down the side of our campfire cardigan and then right here, these are all the bottom, this is the bottom row or the bottom edge to the campfire cardigan. How we will work the corner, I'm gonna show you two different ways. I'm gonna show you how the pattern calls for it and then how I adjusted it a little bit working with the yarn that I'm working with. So we have made it to the corner. You see these three double crochet stitches right here. We're actually going to separate the last double crochet stitch from the other two. And then in this space between, we are going to work our three double crochet stitches. So I'm gonna chain one, and then work my three double crochets. One, two, three, and then according to the pattern, we will just chain one, turn, and then start working along this side. Now, if that works for you and the yarn lays flat for you, that is perfect. For me, it didn't quite lay flat the way I wanted it to. So what I did to deviate just a little bit, and of course, this is something that you can either choose to use or not. I just made another three double crochet stitches in the same space. One, two, three, and then for me that helped it to lay flat. And that's just the yarn I was working with. So I have the chain one right there, and then there we go. So I'm gonna do this for my yarn and for my project. If it works for you, use it. If not, the pattern does just call for one group of three double crochet stitches, chain one, and then move on to the next space. All right, now that we are done with the corner, Let's go ahead and shuffle our project. Work along the bottom of your project. Do the next corner the exact same way we worked this corner. Work your way up the other side of the campfire cardigan and I will meet you where the side of the campfire cardigan meets with the hood where we began the whole round one of our border. You should see the chain three. I will meet you there to show you how we close off round one and what we do for the very last step of the campfire cardigan. Okay, so I've made my way all the way up the side. Here is where I started. You can tell by the little tail here that this is the first grouping that I made for the entire border. What we're going to do after you chain one, so I made three double crochet, chain one, you will slip stitch into the third chain. One, two, three. 
of that chain three we began with, and that closes round one of the entire border. The very last step that we're going to do is make a row two of the border, but only around the hood. We're not going around the entire cardigan this time. So we are going to start by chaining one and then making three double crochet stitches in this space right here. One, two, three, perfect. Now we're gonna repeat that chain one, three double crochet stitch in the next 24 little spaces here. So go ahead and continue on. Next 24 spaces, making our way all the way around the hood to where it attached to the main body of our campfire cardigan. And I'll meet you here to show you how we close everything off and finish the campfire cardigan. All right, we just made our way all the way around the hood. To close off this section, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch space. Slip stitch, great. Slip stitch into the following stitch space, just to secure everything down, make sure it all kind of flows in real well. Grab our scissors, cut a long enough tail for us to weave in that end. Yarn over, pull the tail through the loop, pull tight for a tie off. We're done. That's it guys. The campfire cardigan is now officially complete. And all you have to do is weave in these two ends, the one that we began with, the one that we ended with, right here. Weave those in and you're done. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All right guys, so what did you think of the campfire cardigan? I know this was a long video. Thank you so much for making it to the end with me. I hope that I explained every step well enough for it to be easy peasy for you to make because it really is a cool project. It really is. All right, I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please push that thumbs up button. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss my next upcoming videos. Also check out my membership program. See if there is a level that fits you best. I would love for you to join. If you liked this video, you might also like these videos that I've made right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.